Good Saturday morning, everyone. Today on Perspectives, we're going to take a stroll through time and history. The Port City's history, in fact. The History Museum of the City of Mobile has put together a unique collection of objects to tell the story of the City of Mobile from early Native American settlements on the Gulf Coast to the present day 21st century Port City. Thinking about the history of Mobile, for some, Mardi Gras may come to mind, since, of course, Mobile is the birthplace of Carnival in the Americas. But the history of Mobile is so much more, and you can explore that story in a history of Mobile in 22 objects, an exhibit at the History Museum. Exhibit curators have selected 22 unexpected and compelling objects that weave together more than 300 years of Mobile's history starting with the pre-colonial era and ending with the 21st century Port of Mobile. The exhibit is a collaboration and contribution from the city's leading historians, professors, and museum curators. There's a lot to cover. The artifacts offer a discussion starting point as to what makes the Port City different from other coastal communities. With 22 objects, curators explore the story of Colonial Mobile, yellow fever epidemics, civil rights, and the hurricanes. In addition, the exhibit showcases the economic, political, and educational tools that shaped not only our past, but our future as well. This morning, our guest is Meg Fowler, director of the History Museum of Mobile. In addition to talking about the exhibit, Director Fowler says that the 22 Objects exhibition allows for visitor interaction. After visiting the museum, you can provide answers to the question, what are we missing? As the curators and historians continue to update the story of Mobile. 22 Objects take us back in time to discover new and familiar stories of Mobile's history. Perspectives continues after this quick break. Our guest this morning, Meg McCrumman Fowler. She's the director of the Mobile History Museum. And we thank you so much for joining us this morning and being a part of this discussion. Thank you so much, glad to be here. Let's talk about the, what you are calling a landmark exhibition, a history of Mobile in 22 objects along with a catalog. Give us an idea of what we're talking about here. This is the History Museum's newest exhibit. We're so excited to have it opened. It opened on October 30th. And in this exhibit, and, and as you said, in the catalog that's been published to go with it, we have 22 unexpected compelling objects that tell this whole long history, all the way from the pre-colonial mound builders all the way to the modern port. So 22 objects telling this great big history. And we're talking about a city that has a more than 300 year history. How do you get it down into just 22? Well, this was certainly the challenge. You know, we were really inspired by an exhibit that the British Museum did about a decade ago called A History of the World in 100 Objects. And since then, a number of, of books and institutions have kind of taken this idea of how do you tell, and this is this idea we were really fascinated by, how do you tell this great big, long, complex history in as few objects as possible. And we said we can do it in 22, but not one less. <laughs> now let's look at uh, the beginning. Where do we start when we talk about the history of the city of Mobile and how far it goes back? What's our starting point? So we start before colonial contact with the mound builders. So a couple thousand years ago, um, we have a, a fascinating artifact. And you know, what we're always looking for are simple, unassuming objects. That's what you really find in this exhibit that open up interesting, complex stories. Um, and we've tried to tell a real variety of different types of histories, too. So in some instances, you have objects related to well-known famous persons. So Henry de Tanti, famous colonial explorer, Ta de Tanti of the Iron Hand. Or when we talk about civil rights, we have John LaFleur's typewriter as the object that allows us to talk about civil rights. But we also want to tell different types of history. So we want to tell, uh, we have a, a hand cart when we're talking about the cotton economy that allows us to tell the story of all the unnamed laborers who worked at the cotton wharfs in Mobile for, for decades upon decades and then we have environmental history where we talk about the oil spill so really looking to cover a lot of of different types of history political environmental economic um, famous and 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 everyday folks as well 
And how does the catalog tie into that? Is it just of those 22 objects or where exactly does it take us? So we're always looking to work through exhibits in layers. Um, we talk a lot about layers. So when you visit the exhibit, there are, the, there's one layer that we have a, a one sentence summary. And if you want to read one sentence about this object and move on, you can do that. If you want to read a little more in a text panel, that's there. And if you really want to go in depth, we have this catalog. And so there is an essay for each of the 22 objects. And put in this catalog, we've worked really hard to walk a line between beautiful coffee table books. So this is a, it's a beautiful Christmas present, really gorgeous coffee table book, but also something that is a contribution to the study of Mobile history. And what's so special about this catalog is that 24 professors, curators, historians, some of Mobile's very best writers have written the essays. And so um, each essay written by a different different contributor, and that's what really makes it such a, a rich and engaging, lots of voices coming to bear on this history of Mobile. When you talk about those essays, let's talk about who these people are that are writing the essays and how their expertise ties into this. So, great question. So we have professors from all four of Mobile's colleges, curators from nine different museums, um, and some of Mobile's very best writers. So in a lot of names that, that people will recognize, John Sledge, Fry Gilliard, Cart Blackwell, Tom McGee, all, you know, kind of the, some of the expected folks in, in Mobile history and really some of our city's treasures and writers, but also a lot of new voices and, and, and new names to discover each an expert in the either in the history of this period in the object itself um, in in one way or another really rich diverse voices and I see you have one of my favorite uh, historians on there dr. Michael Thomason who uh, has been around a few years and really can give you some uh, insight into the history of mobile what area does he address he wrote a beautiful essay about the air between the first and the second Second World War, so between the two world wars in Mobile, and talks about in that essay the, an era uh, in which Mobile was kind of caught between tradition and progress. And the object is this fascinating, um, really beautiful pastel of the Bankhead Tunnel. So if you've ever wondered how the Bankhead Tunnel got there, how they built it, that's what this pastel shows. And it was actually built in dry dock, um, and, so, and, and so built on land and then sunk into the river and, and that's what this pastel shows and he talks about the pastel the artist trained in the 19th century but depicting a very modern 20th century um, uh, industry and an exploit and how that very much mirrors what was happening in Mobile at the time, stuck in 19th century patterns and, and certainly in social patterns in some way, but also being drawn through the Great Depression, through the Works Progress Administration, projects like building the Bank and Tunnel, being kind of drawn into the 20th century as well, which really um, consummates in, in the Second World War. And of course, Brooklyn Phil playing a major part of uh, tying into the economy and what it did for Mobile at that time. And then, of course, after it was lost, uh, the major change there. So that'll be interesting to read that. And I guess, Meg, as we uh, look at, we're about to take a break here and we'll talk more, but uh, give us an idea of what's uh, the new hours or the existing hours at the museum for those people who may not be familiar with what may have changed during this pandemic. So our hours have remained the same. We are open seven days a week, um, Monday through Saturday from nine to five, and Sunday in the afternoon from one to five. What has changed are all of the COVID protocols that of course we've now come to expect. Um, so of course masks are required as they are everywhere. We have enhanced sanitation protocols. We're going to a museum is a really good socially distant activity. It's a great way to get out of the house, but to do so in a, in a safe, socially distant way. And of course, you've got a lot of open space within the museum itself and high ceilings, which make a difference too. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're, we're so grateful for all the visitors that have been coming. 
Well, when we come back, we're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some more of those stories, as well as uh, some of the essays by the different professors who have contributed to this. So we get a true picture of how uh, special this 22 object exhibition is. And we look forward to, of course, encouraging folk to make their way to the History Museum of Mobile. Our guest this morning, Meg Fowler, the director of the museum. And we'll talk more with her about this incredible landmark exhibition taking place when Perspectives continues in just a moment. Welcome back to Perspectives. Our guest this morning, Meg Fowler. She's a director of the History Museum of Mobile, and we're talking about a landmark exhibition, The History of Mobile in 22 Objects. And Meg, one of the quotes that you have uh, in the information you're sharing is that this is a history of Mobile, not the definitive history, though, of Mobile. What exactly does that mean to the person who will be coming to the museum to see what you have on the exhibition? One of the things we wanted to do in this exhibit is to be very upfront about the historical process. Maybe pull the curtain back on what historians and curators do every day. And that is choose certain objects, certain sources, certain facts, and string them together to tell a historical narrative. And so that's very easy to imagine when you only have 22 objects, that we could have chosen 22 different objects and they would have told a very different story. And so, as a visitor, if you read the catalog, you come to the end of the exhibit or to the end of the catalog, and there's a place for visitors to actually write what are we missing and to leave those comments on the wall, which is wonderful and delightful to see all of these other wonderful stories about Mobile, and, and we've gotten some really thoughtful and interesting contributions there. But it was also important, as I said, for us to really help people understand and, and again pull that veil back on what historians and curators are always doing. So you see it with 22 objects but sometimes you maybe visit a museum or you read a book and it seems like this is the only narrative that could have been told about a story. But actually there are always choices being made whether that's a writer or a curator, a historian, making choices about which objects are being included, which sources are being included. And so we're very upfront about that. And we know that different objects would have told a different story. And that's why, as you said, this is a history of Mobile. It's not the definitive history. And we know that future generations will have many more stories to tell as well. You have an extensive background in history, both the bachelor's, your master's, you're currently working on your PhD, and you even spent time in Paris. So I'm sure you have a, a varied perspective of making sure that as much of the history is included in an older city like Mobile, like in Paris, where you spent time as well. Uh, when you share this with the public, uh, what do they take away from this with the objects and, and the big picture? Well, one of the themes that really emerged as we put together this exhibit is how very connected we are to the water. Um, certainly, I think about the French colonial connection. You mentioned time I've spent in France. Um, all of Mobile's colonial, English, Spanish, and French, very much about water access. But we also think about how almost nearly every object in one way or another um, is connected to our proximity to the water. And so whether that's in obvious ways like generations of Mobilians dealing with hurricanes, um, yellow fever epidemics that were so severe in Mobile because we were close to the water because of low-lying swampy areas or traditions like Mardi Gras that are connected to that colonial heritage, which again is because we are a port city, Mobile's Catholic heritage, on and on almost every single story in one way or another shipbuilding during World War II connects to the water. And what was interesting is we found the very last object, the 22nd object, is about the modern port city. It's the wheel of the SS Gateway City that was the first containerized ship. Um, and what we talk about in talking about Mobile as a modern port city is that in some ways this modern port has brought us back to the colonial Mobile in that we are a port driven economy so de um, dependent on and connected to our ties to the water, but also that we're a multinational city like the colonial 
Colonial Mobile, um, where we begin, the modern port has brought in all of these multinational companies. And, and so really kind of a beautiful full circle that we're, we're able to see in this exhibit. And of course, being a history nut, I'm extremely excited about checking this out as you share more information. Let's address a couple of areas where a lot of people today wanting to know about their history and how they fit into the history of a great city like Mobile. Share us a couple of stories, uh, one about the Native Americans and the African Americans. Absolutely. So we have, um, again, perhaps an unexpected object when we're talking about Native American history. It is a violent then that was that belonged to Red Eagle. Um, so very important Creek figure um, and and again perhaps not what you would expect from an American Indian story but really speaks to the duality of his Creek and European descent but also of that exchange some very often conflict between um, between the native and the European um, forces. So so that is is one that you see right when you walk in. Um, we certainly, in terms of African American history, weaves its way really in one way or another through through almost all of the panels. We have one very poignant object is a pass that was for an enslaved woman. Um, and it was signed in the mayor's office and it was a pass for her to reside off premises of her owner. And it was signed in the mayor's office in 1859. And what's particularly poignant about this is that in 1859 the mayor's office is the building that we are now in the history museum of mobile the building in which this object still resides and so it's such a powerful reminder of the long and and often troubled history that so many of our very old buildings even the one that i work in every day that that, that those buildings have Let's talk about some of those professors that uh, you mentioned a few at the beginning and we talked about uh, Dr. Thomason's essay. Give us an idea of some that we should be making sure we take a few moments to read that one. Well, they're all so, so rich and wonderful. My goodness, it is hard to choose. Um, one particularly lovely essay is by Breck Pappas, who's a writer for Mobile Bay Magazine. He writes about the experience of hurricanes. And my goodness, what a hurricane season this has been. Um, and what it's like as Mobilians to always live with this threat of the next hurricane and how that has been an experience that has really bound us together over the years, he says, to, to live in a place where even the ground beneath our feet is temporary. Um, and, and so really powerful reminder there, but you know, we think also for past centuries of Mobilians in, in a hurricane, for example, Without the technology that we have today, every afternoon thunderstorm might have been the hurricane that mm. ended everything. Um, and, and so really thinking about how fortunate we are, but yet also how that experience by, binds us with our, um, with our predecessors in Mobile. It's, it's a powerful essay for sure. I love how you tied in the aspect of the connection with the water for most of the history of this city. What about uh, the moving of the city from the 27 mile bluff down to where it's today and where of course most generations know Mobile as this place here at the river at the bay, but is that tied into the history of Mobile? So it is. We talk about, uh, we have this wonderful painting. It's really, this is one of the museum's prized objects, a, a painting of Henry de Tanti by Dutch master Nicholas Mays. Um, it's the second object in the exhibit. And what we explain though, is that that original settlement by de Tanti is, as you said, 27 miles north of where we are today. And so um, a number of factors came together, one of them being yellow fever and an epidemic that we can certainly relate to ourselves um, in, in our day and age, but a number of factors um, made that decision for those earliest Mobilians to move to F Fort Condi, which is the, the present location um, of Mobile. And of course, we have the reconstructed fort um, on approximately the same site. There's, and you can see, of course, in Mardi Gras Park, some of those remnants of the original fort, but, but that happened. Um, as you said, we're, we're not the very original site of Mobile, but, but pretty close. 
Meg Fowler, we thank you so much for coming and sharing today and a reminder again of the times and how long this exhibit will be on uh, display there at the museum. Thank you so much. Yes, we will. It will be up through 2021 and the History Museum again open seven days a week, um, Sundays just in the afternoon. Look forward to seeing everyone. We thank you so much. Meg Fowler, the director of the History Museum of Mobile and of course this landmark exhibition taking place now. Thank you. Thank you. For more information on a history of Mobile in 22 objects, check out the museum's website at historymuseumofmobile.com. Now you can also give them a call at the number you see there on the screen as well. Well, please join us here next Saturday morning for Perspectives as we discuss important issues and seeking solutions. Now, if you have ideas of topics you'd like for us to address, just drop it to us at perspectives at fox10tv.com. I'm Eric Reynolds. Have a great week.